For AP Physics 1, one of the skills you need to have is the ability to analyze experimental data. So I want to quickly walk you through a simple example problem dealing with periodic motion related to oscillating spring mass systems, which you guys should be able to analyze. So let's say the question reads like a student performs an experiment where they change the mass hanging on a spring and then they make it oscillate up and down and they just measure the period, how much time it takes to go through one complete cycle. So the question might be, how could you use the given experimental data to estimate the spring constant of the spring used in the experiment? Well, usually with these type of questions, they're going to ask you to make some kind of graph and then use some value from that graph in order to determine the value they're asking about, in this case, the spring constant. Well, the first thing you should do is think about, do we have an equation which relates mass period and a spring constant. So you should go to your AP Physics 1 equation sheet. And at this point in class, or if you're taking the test, you already know that the period of a spring mass system is equal to 2 pi times the square root of mass divided by the spring constant. So if you have to make a graph where you're going to pull some kind of value off of that graph to figure out the spring constant, you want to think about what kind of graph would I need to make so it's a linear relationship so when I find the slope of a line, which is constant, the slope in some way will allow me to calculate the value it's asking about, and in this case, it's the spring constant. And so if you're going to make a line or a graph that makes a linear relationship, it's going to follow the form of y equals m times x plus b. And so you're always going to be graphing, you know, one of the experimentally measured values in the y-axis, the other experimentally measured value in the x-axis, and sometimes that would make a linear relationship, but sometimes that would make a top-opening parabola, maybe it'd be an inverse relationship, or a side-opening parabola. So let's look at the equation to figure out, you know, what would we need to graph to make a line? Well, we already have, like, t equals something, so we could put the period on the y-axis, um, and what would we put on the x-axis? It's got to be either the mass or something related to the mass. Well, if we look at our general equation, we have the square root of m times stuff, not m. So instead of placing m on the horizontal axis or the x-axis, we could graph the square root of the mass values on the x-axis. Okay, so if we did that, what would, what would the slope be and what would the y-intercept be? Well, in this equation, there's, you know, something, and there's, there's no plus any term, so there's no y-intercept on this graph that we would make. But it turns out, if we just kind of rearrange this equation so we get period equals something times the square root of mass, it looks like this. Right? We've got 2 pi, and we pull out the square root of k in the denominator out here. So if we just rearrange our general equation, we get period is equal to 2 pi over the square root of k, times the square root of mass. And if you look up at the slope-intercept form of a line, we can see that period is on the y-axis, square root of mass is on the x-axis, and the slope of that graph would just be equal to 2 pi divided by the square root of k. So if we can make that graph and estimate the slope, we should be able to solve for k. So let's do that. So if we want to make a period versus square root of mass graph, we need to have some values of the square root of, of the masses. So we'd have to take each of these values and square root it and make another column of those values. So I'm going to do that right here for us. So the square root of 0.2 is 0.447, the square root of 1 is 1, etc. So this is the square root of mass, and the units would be the square root of kilograms. If this was a question on a test or the AP exam, you'd have to go through and actually hand calculate the square root of each of these values and then plot it on some axes. Well, here's what the data would look like, and it should look linear if we did everything right. So in this case, it does look linear. And on a test, you'd have to add, add your own line of best fit, and then you'd have to estimate the slope. So when you add your line of best fit to get the slope, you don't want to pick any two points. You want to pick two points which actually fall on your line of best fit. That might be a point for a free response question. If you don't choose points on your line of best fit that you've drawn, you might miss a point. So to estimate the slope, slope, remember, is the, the change in the y value divided by the change in the x value or the rise over the run. And if we do that for this graph, the slope turns out to be about 0.944 seconds divided by the square root of kilograms. That's the units of our slope. Well, remember, like, what does our slope represent? Well, when we rearrange the general equation, we saw that the slope is equal to 2 pi divided by the square root of our spring constant, and we're trying to figure that out. 
So if the slope is 0.944 seconds divided by one over kilograms, we just set that equal to two pi divided by the square root of the spring constant. So we now just have a simple algebraic equation. A few steps algebra later, we'd find the experimentally estimated value for the spring constant using the data that was given to be about 44.3 newtons per meter.